What's going down, everybody? It's your boy that got my hot tuna back in front of the reaction. This time we got 11 times boasting went, or 11 times that boasting went terribly wrong. Um, this is from the channel World World's List, I believe. Um, so shout out to them. But before we jump into this video, man, we got to give a big shout out to all the members. We got Jamal, Jeffries, Holla Girl, Taylor, Funny Farm, Jordan, Christy, Holla Boy, Marla, Marie, Diesel, Tammy, Nick, Creatively Insane, Carrie, Ryan, Nicole, Aaron, Mama Dukes, Misty Summers, Lynn Willow, Driver Thoughts, Lynn, Amy Jane Doe, Liz, Nugget, My Hood Life, and Gary Willis. Gang, gang, gang. Shout out to all of them um, and uh, everybody else who's, who just helps support the channel as well. But, you know, if you want to get a personal by name shout out from your boy, that guy, Mile High, think about hitting that join button down below. You got three different options to choose from. Take advantage of some perks and everything else as well. And uh, yeah, otherwise, just free 99 and hit that subscribe, hit that bell notification and help us hit 100K today. You dig? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so World List is the channel. Shout out to uh, them. And let's see what this is about. 11 times boasting went terribly wrong. Let's go. 11. Fontro Antonio Baines. Better known to some by his stage name Nuke Bizzle, 31 year old Memphis based rapper Fontrell Antonio Baines caught the attention of federal authorities when he bragged in a music video about getting rich off ill gained COVID relief assistance. <laughs> Investigators soon found. <laughs> oh, bruh, okay. So they are legitimately about to look at all the times that stupid rappers were out here boasting and talking about all this money that they was you know essentially stealing from the government and okay you know all the scam artists and shit like that the scammers and the and the ppp loan uh ppp loan you know fraudsters and shit you know what i'm saying they they got a couple of them they got a couple of them okay okay they had fraudulently obtained 1.2 million so dollars in unemployment benefits in the state of california where he was residing at the time he carried out the scam the Department of Justice accused Baines of possessing and using at least 92 preloaded debit cards that were obtained with unemployment applications Damn. connected to various addresses the rapper had access to. He and several co-conspirators allegedly used the debit cards to buy things and withdrew $704,000 in cash from ATMs. Damn. And then Baines broke the number one rule about not getting caught and threw himself under the bus by releasing a song called EDD. <laughs> which is an abbreviation for California's Employment Development Department. In the video, he and other rappers can be seen holding envelopes from the agency and boasting about how they just file a claim while other criminals sell drugs. The feds caught up with Baines in Las Vegas in late 2020 and charged him with access device fraud, aggravated identity theft, and interstate transportation of stolen property. The trial is ongoing. If convicted on all counts, Baines could face up to 22 years behind bars. Damn. 10. Fredo. Well. In 2019, 25 year old London based rapper Marvin Bailey, who goes by the stage name Fredo, posted photos and videos of himself with large wads of cash on social media. Not long after that, he was pulled over in his Range Rover and arrested on suspicion of possessing criminal property. In the video, the rapper can be seen Why? pulling the seatbelt across stacks of money in the passenger seat. Police searched his vehicle and found 50,000 pounds. Another man who was in the vehicle with Fredo was charged with possession of an offensive weapon, theft, and making death I mean, threats. you better hope you got... Look, you better hope you got some fucking... You know, that heat, that, that, that glizzy on the side of you, somebody who's ready to help ride for you if you're walking around with 50 rags just in the, in the front seat. Like, what the fuck? came just a year after he shot to fame for his hit single, Funky Friday. While it's unclear how the case played out or exactly what type of criminal activity police believe that the cash was connected with, one can only hope that Fredo has gone back to using his talent to make a living and that he's learned his lesson about the consequences of showing off on social media. Probably not. Eight. I mean, we, we live in the era of self-snitching. Like, let's just be real. People do not know how to not put their wrongdoings on social media because everybody wants to show like that they're a badass or that they're doing something cool that someone else is too afraid to do or can't do or whatever the case might be. I mean, we're in the era of boasting. Like this is the boasting era. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even if you cap, you could be you could be full of cap and still present yourself as like somebody doing something because of social media. You know what I'm saying? Ruben Carvalho took his criminal cap. career gotta really be out here. to move That's on. the crazy thing. You ain't even got to be out here being a criminal for real. You could just legitimately cap your way to the top, bro. Like, let's be real. Let's really be real. Like, come on. Chain of command and become the commander of a group of street-level drug dealers in Cardiff, Wales. The young man ran a lucrative drug line that saw a six-figure profit over a four-month span between late 2019 and early 2020. But when his runners started getting arrested, 
Carvalho's operation became short-staffed, forcing him to carry out some low-level sales that he wouldn't normally do. <laughs> Through these interactions... Bruh! They became short-stabbed. Nigga, if either one, your peoples are getting caught, so that means you're working with idiots anyway. Or two, they watching your ass and they pulling people out to the fucking game, trying to catch your ass, trying to see if you're dumb enough to sit here and go and, and do some low-level ass crime shit that is super easy to get people tied up on. Like, so crack cocaine come on, and Ruben, heroin an to undercover officers Ruben's on two separate idiot. occasions. During one conversation, he bragged to a cop about how you build an enterprise and go down because you're... Day. Until a seller started You're getting dumb enough to go make a hand to hand sale. Carvalho then yeah. went on to say that his profits had dropped to £1,000 per day and encouraged the officers to spread his phone number around in hopes of attracting more business. Soon enough, he was busted for his illicit activities as part of a police initiative called Operation Talon. By that, Carvalho already had drug related convictions from previous offenses. He pleaded guilty to supplying and intent to supply Class A drugs, and it appears as though he's awaiting sentencing. 8. Dog Breeding Disaster on somebody. A dog breeder from Port St. Lucie, Florida, recently found himself face-to-face -face with three home intruders after bragging online about how much money he makes with his business. In a harrowing ordeal that lasted for nearly two days, the trio posted... This motherfucker must be one of these uh, French Bulldog breeders, bruh. One of the French Bulldog breeders. Because that's the only dogs I can think of that people is out here really, like... Motherfuckers will bust your ass for one of these French French bulldogs. You know what I'm saying? Like them them dogs. Like if if you getting a cheap one, it's because you found like a in my opinion like a backyard breeder who's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell you this French bulldog between, you know, three four grand upwards of ten. And then you got like the prestigious French bulldog breeders and shit. The you know d the designer bulls and top of the line Frenchies and little freak kennels and you know all these. There's a whole bunch of them, but their dogs is like. 50, 100, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? K, not not $50 to $100. No, 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 no. 50K to like 100K, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, th that's the only dogs that I could think that some people would be like, oh, oh, you got all that money? You, oh, okay, we got to come steal some of them dogs then. Like Customers who were interested in buying dogs and then robbed the terrified victim and made him drive them to various locations. While driving, the dog breeder noticed a Martin County Sheriff's Office vehicle on the road. He purposefully drove erratically to try getting law enforcement to pull him over. It worked, but the victim was too scared to tell the deputy he spoke with about the fact that he was actively being kidnapped. What? The deputy was about to let the man drive away with a warning when he made a hand gesture indicating that he was in danger with a pleading look of despair on his face. Inside the vehicle, officers found guns, knives, and a large sum of cash. The suspects, Tezekiel Sellers, Banyavin Radcliffe, and Kasia Yuval Brangdon, face a laundry list of charges including unlicensed carry of a firearm, possession of a controlled substance, providing a false name, kidnapping, assault, home invasion, false imprisonment, and witness tampering. All three men were visiting Florida from out of state, according to a Facebook post by the Martin County Sheriff's Office. The suspects reportedly told investigators that they were in the area to hang out with women, but that's unlikely to happen anytime soon as they await their next court date from behind bars. Facts. Seven, Damn, I wish they would have told us a little Andrea bit more about like, what, what kind of dogs Two pregnant 19-year-olds were sitting in a car together in Riviera Beach, Florida on Christmas Eve in 2017 when another woman <laughs> began chasing them with her vehicle and pointing a taser at them. The pursuit ended when the attacker crashed into the victim's car. Police reported to the scene and initially decided not to arrest the suspect, 23-year-old Antisha Andrea Brown. So what should you get on social media? One of the media? victims later contacted law enforcement and reported that Brown was bragging on social media about destroying their car and making them walk for the holidays. At that point, the police changed their minds and picked the suspect up on charges of aggravated battery with a weapon and Good. aggravated battery on a known pregnant woman. Good, Brown Stupid. was held without bond at the Palm Beach County Jail while she waited to face the allegations against her. A few months later, she ended up receiving a two-year prison sentence for unrelated crimes, <laughs> including get. identity fraud and illegal possession of a debit or credit card. She was Damn. released in October 2019. 6. Orville Johnson In 2017, an undercover detective with the Kansas City Police Department in Missouri worked their way into the good graces of a drug dealer named Orville L. Johnson. During one of the several cocaine sales Johnson made to the undercover cop, he bragged about killing someone who tried to rob him 
stating that he had to kill the man and blew half his face off. Johnson was referring to the March 2017 death of 30-year-old man named Ricky Boswell. His co-defendant, Latasha M. Alexander, initially claimed that she shot Boswell because he tried to rape her, but she later recanted her story and pleaded guilty to concealing a felony. Yep. Authorities ultimately determined that evidence of the scene was consistent with Johnson's claims of self-defense and decided against charging him in connection with Boswell's death. What? But he still had to face the music for his alleged drug trafficking activities, which had caught the attention of both local and federal authorities. Johnson pleaded guilty in 2019 to numerous charges, including distributing cocaine, possessing a firearm in relation to drug trafficking, possession with intent to distribute, and being a drug user in possession of a firearm. He was sentenced to a decade in prison with no possibility of parole. Damn, Five, that's James just, Heald. That's just, I'm still shocked though, like how did he not have, like was there just not enough evidence to like put it together or ultimately they just like, after looking at it, they were like, oh, it was self-defense either fucking way. So fuck it, we're gonna pursue these other charges and let that shit go. Like, is that what really what happened? Like, it's crazy. Year, a female undercover officer began posing as a drug dealer in the Welsh seaside town of Ryle as part of law enforcement campaign codenamed Operation Blue Revolution. She bought drugs from several dealers in the area, including 43-year-old James Heald, who allegedly bragged to the officer about how he had cocaine and sold her a small amount of crack. Heald was arrested and ultimately pleaded guilty to the charge. His lawyer told the judge that at the time, his client had recently lost his job and was homeless, but that the defendant had moved and was receiving mental health treatment for his issues. The judge accused Heald of being attracted to the undercover officer and bragging to her because he thought she was pretty, but imposed a two-year suspended sentence in hopes that he would continue getting his life together. He was required to complete a nine-month drug rehabilitation program and pay a fine. Hopefully, when he finds himself attracted to another woman in the future, well, he'll find a yeah, less don't be out here bragging about way your illegal her. activities to all these Ball, chicks, bro. You deadly never know. disagreement. <laughs> you never in know. In late May, police in Wichita Falls, Texas, were called to do a welfare check, but they instead encountered a murder scene inside what? a home where they found the brutally beaten body of 23-year-old Zachary Wood. An investigation led detectives to numerous suspects who were all accused of playing a role in the gruesome homicide. 18-year-old Ronnie Lang and 28-year-old William Bell were the first to be arrested when they were brought down on aggravated assault and murder charges. The pair reportedly confessed their involvement in Wood's death after another suspect, 27-year-old Peyton Collier, implicated them in the crime. Collier is also facing a murder charge. Yeah, because he didn't 21 go tell year old nobody. Ashley Marie Esselborn was the fourth suspect to be charged after a cooperating witness told police that they'd overheard her bragging on the phone about how she'd participated in the attack and hadn't gone to jail. In an earlier statement to police, suspect Peyton Collier had claimed that Esselborn didn't lay hands on Wood, but that she had cheered the attackers on as they beat him mercilessly. The violence allegedly began after Esselborn slept in the same room as Wood and woke up to find drugs missing from her purse. Around the same time, Collier noticed that she was missing some money, leading others in the house to suspect Wood of stealing from the women and ending in the vicious assault. Damn. Esselborn reportedly told detectives that she and suspect William Bell left the scene at some point and discarded bloody items as they were driving. For now, the suspects remain behind bars and bonds of at least one million dollars each. Three, felonious family Golly. members. In what police are describing as out. a senseless act of violence, a teenager named Ethan Lyman was beaten to death recently outside a school in Akron, Ohio. He was playing basketball with some friends when another group of young men approached and allegedly started firing a water gel gun at them. A fight ensued, and it ended with Lyman dead on the pavement after he fell unconscious and was brutally bludgeoned. Damn. The attackers fled the scene and initially got away with the crime, leading police to appeal to the public for information. Witnesses came forward and claimed the brothers to Sean and Tyler Stafford and their cousin Donovan Jones had been bragging about killing Lyman. The trio are currently being held on charges of murder and felonious assault. In a statement, Akron Police Chief Steve Milan acknowledged that while he believed the victim's family would welcome news of the arrest, nothing could bring Ethan back. Thanks. Milan condemned the worsening problem of violence in the United States and called for an end to the senseless acts that are claiming innocent lives in alarming numbers across the country. 2. Nikki Hall 
In late 2020, police in Swansea, Wales, followed a suspicious white van that they later determined had been stolen from an Amazon delivery driver and had fake plates attached to it. After briefly losing sight of the vehicle, they found it near a park entrance with two men nearby. The suspects attempted to flee the scene on foot, but officers soon caught up with 24-year-old Nicky Hall. When the cops looked at the man's phone, they found messages about selling drugs and several videos showing drug-related footage, including clips of people weighing, packaging, and using illicit substances. As it turned out, the videos were advertisements for drugs that Hall was selling. One ad even contained a statement bragging about the quality of his cocaine supply. Stating, that is wild. I mean, the, the, the fact that you're making commercials and shit, bro, this dude was thinking way ahead of his... <laughs> his oh, man. He's like, I'm going to make commercials. Like, make what? you fly like a kite. Police were far less impressed with Hall's marketing skills than his customers probably were. I'm Especially impressed. Their marketing skills was amazing, bro. That he ditched after this seeing the police were on his train. Commercials and shit? He was released amid an ongoing Get investigation. It but wound up back in custody a few months later after he was caught with baggies containing heroin. Hall's lawyers claimed that the man's life spiraled out of control following a motorcycle accident in 2020. After spending weeks in the hospital, he became involved with the wrong crowd and fell into a criminal lifestyle. The judge met the explanation with skepticism, stating that it seemed as though Hall had a substantial customer base and that there was an apparent element <laughs> he of was doing this. in Brad, what he was doing. <laughs> you can't sit here and be like, I fell into bad times and hard times and blah, blah. Nigga, you're making commercials. You're making commercials. I mean, there's there's decorated goddamn, you know, drug dealers and shit who who, who did some amazing things uh, in, in, in that world. And, and, you know, when you just kind of like just talk about accomplishments within the world of of that world you know uh <laughs> there's some people who stand out right and none of them none of the, not one of these niggas made a commercial i'm just saying not none of these three and a half years right? behind bars you're competing with the fucking pharmacies and shit bean senior commercials 61 year old tony bean was working as the chief of the tracy city police department in tennessee in 2014 when he punched a handcuffed suspect repeatedly in the face. Damn. The suspect had allegedly insulted Bean's wife, who was at the scene but isn't a cop. She was also present when someone crashed their car into the couple's vehicle in 2017. By then, Bean had become a deputy for the Grundy County Sheriff's Office. Once again, he repeatedly punched the cooperating subject in the face. In late 2020, Federal that prosecutors accused both Bean and his son, Grundy County Deputy Anthony T.J. Bean, of federal civil rights violations, yeah. using excessive force and failing to report their use of force. In addition to the two main examples described in the indictment, authorities cited five other instances where at least one of the men had reportedly abused their power. The complaint described how the elder Bean boastfully described his violent behavior as the Grundy County way of doing things and discouraged those working under him from turning their body cameras on before committing some of the alleged beatings. After wow. one particularly brutal assault, he reportedly bragged to his colleagues about how he hurt his punching hand. 30-year-old T.J. Bean was acquitted of one federal count of deprivation of rights, but his father was convicted on three counts relating to incidents involving two victims. He faces up to 10 years in prison Good. for each Fuck count. Him, Thanks for watching. Damn, that's you fucked have... up. And that's crazy. He, it was a father-son duo, and they over here just encouraging people to beat the shit out of people. Or not people, cops, people in authority to beat the shit out of people for no reason. That's fucked up, bro. That is so jacked up. Anyways, man, that 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 was that was just like I'm just like at the end like everything was just like oh that was crazy like what why like you know what I'm saying and then you get to the end like really nigga like really they was doing what oh yeah he gonna have a hard time Mister Mister Bean Seniors about to get his ass beat in jail that's all I gotta say but anyways y'all let me know what you thought about in the comments below and I'll catch y'all next one peace.